How's it going, folks? Welcome to another fun at-home table read. Tonight, we are jumping into easily my favorite guilty pleasure comedy, Saving Silverman. It's one of a fantastic cast. Steve Zahn, Jack Black. Uh, we've got so many fun people in here. Jace Biggs, Amanda Pete, but we don't have that cast with us tonight. we got a much better cast. That's a tall ask, but here we go. Uh, let, let's run through it. Who do we got here with us tonight? My name is Anne. I will be scene description and Neil Diamond. Hi, I'm Eric. I will be the role of Wayne. I'm Logan. I'll be JD. Uh, hello, I'm four time quarantine award winner. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm playing Darren. Hi, I'm Angie, and I am Judith. Uh, Nicole uh, will be joining us uh, shortly. She's going to be Sandy. And I'll, I'm George. I'll be coach. All right. Well, man, take us away. <clears throat> Saving Silverman, written by Hank Nelkin and Greg DePaul, transcribed by that weirdo in the corner. That would be Logan. Exterior, Neil Diamond Show, 1972. The crowd cheers. Sing, sing a song. Sing, sing. Sing a song, a song. Sing, sing. Sing it out. Sing, sing it strong. The song builds as Neil grunts in an uncomfortably sexual manner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call the sun in the dead of night, and the sun's going to rise in the sky. That is totally not how the song goes. Um, interior Wayne's living room present Wayne, mustached and looking a little bit like he smoked some crack, sits in a recliner watching the concert. Neil Diamond. Hot August night, 1972. That concert rocked and rolled. I know because I was there. Exterior Neil Diamond Show, 1972. A very pregnant woman dances next to a blonde guy. And they fly. There's a split screen and the concert on one side and Wayne on the other. He gestures with his remote control to the pregnant belly. That's me. Sploosh. My water broke. Ever since then, I've had this cosmic connection with Neil. Interior Wayne's living room, present. But this story isn't about Neil. It's about me and my two pals, Darren and JD. Exterior school flashback, JD, Wayne, and Darren, all youths shake the shit out of cans of soda. That's the I mean, best friend since fifth grade. <laughs> <clears throat> the pop, <clears throat> <clears throat> pardon me, they pop the tabs, dousing themselves in soda. They keep shaking the cans. Interior school brunch room, flashback, a young JD drinks from a carton of milk. That's JD. He's lactose intolerant. JD wretches and spits up the milk all over the table. And he's not very bright. A young Darren looks nervously down the row of lunch tables. And that's Darren Silverman. He points to himself. A little girl gestures for him to come and join her at the table. He's a romantic. Darren gets up and starts walking towards her. But when it comes to women, he's incredibly gullible. As Darren walks towards her, some kind of pull out of trip line some kids pull out a trip line and send Darren tumbling to the floor. The kids all laugh. Young Wayne sees this. That's me, Wayne. Wayne jumps up and runs over to the girl. I'm loyal to my friends. He stares her down, pissed. If you weren't a girl, I'd beat you up. JD jumps up with him. Me too. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Logan, no beard. Uh, the girl stands and punch paint square in the face. She winds up and hits JD too. Don't! 
<laughs> JD cowers. Wayne takes a swing at her, but she ducks out of the way. My little, or, I'm sorry, my little girl, the little girl throws Wayne down to the lunch table and drags yeah. him along the tabletop, covering him with food. After that, I started working out. Exterior high school football field, years later. We stayed best friends throughout high school. We now see Wayne sitting on the bench rocking a sweet, sweet bullet. Yep, I was the third string quarterback. JD, now full Jack Black is dressed in a big bird suit. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus Christ. JD puts on the head of his suit. JD became the school mascot. <laughs> JD dances mascotting the hell out of this game. Hey, what'd you say? I didn't really want to fucking hear you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. <laughs> Darren dances with the cheer squad. And, and Darren. And Darren joined the cheerleading squad. They finished their cheer. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Next to Darren is a blonde named. Oh, that's Sandy. The split screen returns and Wayne points to Sandy with his remote. Yeah, Darren's always had a thing for her. Darren lifts Sandy into the air, looking up longingly at Sandy's underwear. Guess he's into upskirt stuff. When you're up against a warbird, you're upside down. <laughs> Way to go, Angie. I love this year. Darren tosses Sandy airborne before catching her. Pacing angrily on the side of the field is the coach looking like an even angrier Bobby Knight. Oh, that's Coach Norton. He was a big influence in our lives. He taught us many things. Interior locker room, Coach Norton addresses the players. Two things you got to remember, boys. Number one, stay away from women. All they want from you is your man juice. Now, if you get any urges that you can't suppress with hard liquor, use this. He holds up his hand, you know, to masturbate with. The friends look at him, very confused. Oh, number two? Sportsmanship, sportsmanship, sportsmanship. Exterior high school football field, a player is tackled out of bounds. Coach Norton runs over and smashes his clipboard over the player's head. Haley, you fair wimp fruit bag. You're way too good at that. He turns and throws the player over the water table. You suck. He turns over to Wayne on the bench. Professor, get out there. He grabs Wayne and hoists him to his feet. He throws Wayne towards the field. Wayne scampers back, terrified to get close to the coach. I'm just going to get my helmet off. <laughs> Wayne eyes his friends and shouts out as coach kicks him. Hey, guys, guys, I'm in. Darren and JD run to the sidelines. Excited. Yeah, see, he's, he's going in. Oh, my God. Go, Wayne. Go, Wayne. Go away. Wayne, stands- <laughs> Wayne stands in position. Nobody! Nobody! Go! Ah! <laughs> the play starts and Wayne gets the shit tackled out of him. The opposing team piles onto him. Enter Wayne's living room. Now we're all grown up. Exterior Wayne's house, the boys once again shake up their drinks and pop them open. Beers this time, they spill about 95% of them. That's so wasteful. Yeah! Woo! Hey! (laughs) They toast the cans, drink on one gulp, and throw them to the ground. Interior Wayne's living room. JD is rapidly working his way up the ladder at Subway. Recently, was promoted to temporary second assistant manager in charge of training. Interior subway sandwich shop later, JD walks up to a couple of the students with a supervising manager overlooking everything. Hey, McNugget, let's see what you got. I've been working with them for eight weeks. I present 
the future of Subway sandwiches. Belson. Katie snaps his fingers at the scared kid. Three sizes of bevy are small, medium, and what? The kid looks terrified. Uh, big? Like we practiced, you can do this. He has no clue. Long? JD is not pleased. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to you. JD walks the manager over to the main counter. Sir, that guy is my stinkiest student by far. They reach the counter. Trimble, Let's see your sub. Trimble holds up a full loaf of bread with the ouch, meat wrapped around it like a fucking weirdo. No, no, meat on the inside, bread on the outside. Okay, take it away, take it away. Take it away! <laughs> he walks the manager over to his third student. Uh, don't judge me on those two guys. This next guy is my protege. He's the top of the class, and for his thesis, he made a party sub. <gasps> they reached the big guy, who's standing in front of the remains of a party sub. Heston, where's the party sub? Heston sags and holds out the remains of a party sub he clearly ate the fuck out of. He burps. I was waiting for Angie to burp. Exterior subway sandwich shop. Jamie stumbles outside, having been thrown from his job. You're fired. He angrily turns back and throws his hat back inside. Darren, he's a social director at a retirement home. Interior retire the retirement home. Darren leads a game of bingo. B17. Bingo, bingo. Abe stands up, bare ass hanging out. Abe, pull your pants up or no more matlock. Lock. That was way harsh. Darren is making some uncomfortable eye contact with that old dong. I started my own business. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior woman's yard. A woman comes down from her porch, eagerly awaiting Wayne. Wayne honks his trunk horn. Yoo-hoo! Morning. His truck reads, Cowboy Wayne, Pet Posse, and Rodent Wrangler. Okay, what are we dealing with here? I don't know what it is, but it sounds big. Wayne approaches the underside of her porch. He hears an animal sound underneath. He pulls out his trank gun and investigates. Stay back. I'm going in. Careful, Sonny. Wayne drops to his knees and aims his flashlight in. Wayne, Wayne's serious face dropped. He sees an adorable baby raccoon. <laughs> Sir. Aww. Hey, so you're causing all the trouble, huh? Oh, Wayne comes out from under the porch holding the raccoon. Come here. Hey there, hey dog. Oh, poor little thing, yeah? Aww. Is the fresh pizza? The woman looks on with a smile. He's adorable. Look at that. Hey, where's your mommy? A large raccoon flies through the air and lands on Wayne's head. The woman screams. The raccoon screams. Wayne flounders around trying to free himself. Get off! Get off! Get off! <laughs> Wayne slams it into the porch before throwing the raccoon down and shooting it in the ass with a trank gun. The raccoon yelps and lays still. Is it dead? Wayne no. takes a deep breath. No, but she is in one deep coon coma. Wayne crouches down to the raccoon to make sure it's fine. After a beat, the raccoon jumps up and latches onto Wayne like a face hugger. Wayne topples into the high grass and runs away in fear as the raccoon chases him. No! <laughs> no! 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 Is, is he trying to prat the, the velocir raccoon? Anyway, Wayne runs for the fence and throws himself over the top. We all have one mystical thing in common. 
our love for Neil. Exterior boardwalk later. The boys play together. She got, she got the, the way to prove it. That's our band, Diamonds in the Rough. She got, she got the way the to move me, baby. She got the way to groove me. Darren plays his little piano riff while flirting shamelessly with a girl in the crowd. No, we won't tell a soul where you've gone to. Girl, Girl we, we do whatever, do whatever we, want we want to. Da, 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 da. I love the way that you do me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Jerry, baby, <laughs> we, we get to yeah, me. Da, 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 da. She got the way to prove me, Cherry. She got the way to groove me. She got the way to groove me. She got the way to groove me. Cherry, baby. She's got the way to groove me. They finish off the song and the gathered crowd applauses. The cute girl in the audience claps. Darren closes a guitar case full of a few dollars and walks over to her. Hi. Hey, I'm, I'm Darren. Sophie. I was wondering, uh, maybe do you, um, do you want to grab a drink with me? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm involved. She looks over to Mime, who's throwing a lasso. Is that what the kids call it? With a real entertainer. Uh, the mind pulls her over and away from Darren. Darren half ass tries to throw a lasso too. The mind pulls her in close and kisses her. Darren uses a hand gesture to call the guy a jerk off. Interior bar later that night. I can't believe I got blown off again. I'll, I'll never meet the right girl. Dude, you don't want a chick who'd fuck a mind. Dude, what does a mime look like when it's having sex anyway? It's probably like, haw, haw, I'm a mime, I'm a mime. <laughs> JD is mimey grabbing boobs. Hey, mimes don't talk. They do when they're off duty. It, it's not her. It, it's all women. I, I'm really afraid that there's nobody out there for me. The only girl I ever loved. Walked out of my life years ago. Sandy Perkis. <clears throat> Exterior high school. Flashback. Darren, fo bleh, bleh, Darren poses for a photo with Sandy. R remember her? Smile. Darren stands with her family, an odd bunch, to be sure. Her her family was with the circus. Her dad was the strong man. Her mom was the bearded lady. Her brother was the dog faced boy. Her brother has a literal dog face. Sandy drives away with her family. Bye, Darren. Before I mustered the courage to ask her out, she moved away. Darren runs after the car for a beat. Cut back to interior bar present. You know, I, I truly believe that there is a one and, and only someone for everyone. And Sandy? Sandy Perkins was my one and only. Man, that really is romantic. Oh my God, look at that juicy piece of ass. In walks Judith. The wind blowing in her hair for that pure supermodel look. Work it, girl. What do you think of her? Who? Right there. In the red? Oh yeah, she's gorgeous. Go talk to her. No! Okay, I'll do it for you. Wayne pops up and starts towards her. Oh, what, what? Hey, wait! Wayne steps up to Judith, who's reading a book. Wayne! Wayne! Hi, I'm Wayne. No. No, you, you don't understand. I'm not hitting on you. Back off. Just, whoa, whoa, just, I just want to tell you about my buddy Darren. 
He's smart. He's sensitive. I don't care. You make a wonderful husband. I don't want to meet him. Great. Wayne smiles back and walks away, leaving Judith confused. He gets back to the table with Jaren, the Darren and JD. Dude, she wants you. She thinks you're really cute. Really? Yeah, she was like, I'm so excited to meet him and everything. Are, are you sure? Totally. Get down there and make your move. Uh, I don't know. Come on, you can do it. Carpe poon. Really? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> Carpe poon. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that it just got said. I love you guys. Jaren pulls off his Neil Diamond wig. All right. Yes, yes. Darren heads down to Judith, who barely looks up from her book. I am Darren. No response. So, more to give him a look like, who the fuck is Darren, bitch? Darren, uh, my, my friend said you wanted to meet me. He lied. That's a good one. No, seriously, I don't want to meet you. <laughs> Darren looks defeated. He looks back at Wayne and JD, who give him the thumbs up. Well, um, uh, my, my friend... Must have been mistaken. I, I'm really sorry to bother you. Mm -hmm. Jaren walks away, leaving his beat his beat behind. Jaren is leaving. Up walks Kyle Gas of the Kyle Gas Project. Oh, and a little band called Tenacious D. Let me guess. Wow. That jerk tried to get in your pants with some tacky lie. <laughs> <laughs> Judith could not roll her eyes harder. <laughs> I'm not like that. I use magic. Sure. Oh my God. He pulls his wand. Not a euphemism, and it produces flowers. That's sexy. Beat it, Baldy. Okay. Good stuff. Tough crowd. I like that. I have here two ordinary metal rings. You and me. Can I? Can I? <laughs> Travis, that shit. Kyle connects the rings and looks through them. If this is his A game, woof. Hello. Hello. I love you. Jaren returns to the table. Uh, sorry, I forgot my beer. <gasps> Judith quickly. Oh, he forgot his beer, not his beats. That makes sense now. Judith quickly grabs Darren and forces him to sit next to her. This is my boyfriend Darren, so hit the bricks, Porky. Kyle rises and shakes Darren's hand. Okay. Nice to meet you, Darren. Satan. <laughs> Darren and Judith sit there awkwardly for a moment. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry about hitting on you before. You should be. I am. I am. I, I just I just wasn't thinking. And you're so beautiful. And I, I I'm sorry. Judith eyes Darren for a minute. Darren gets up to leave. She pulls him back to the seat. So make up for it. Buy me a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a scotch. Darren stops the server. Uh, give the lady a scotch, and I'll have another beer. He'll have a gin and tonic. Yeah, make that a gin and tonic. Got it. Darren puts the beer down and pretends to find it gross. Can you believe he hooked up with the queen of all hotties? They're just having a drink together. It's not like they're going steady or anything. Right. They clink their beers together and have a drink. Cut to interior Judas house weeks later it's uh it's midnight you know what that means judith is lotioning her legs as darren sits on the bed no what it's our six week anniversary oh she clearly doesn't care for so little an anniversary D did you get me anything no that's okay. That's okay. No big deal. But, uh... <clears throat> Darren stands and pulls a small jewelry box out from under the pillow. I, I, 
I got you a little something. He shows her a small necklace. She looks genuinely touched. Thanks. That's really nice. Clack! She closes the box and puts it on a shelf, never to look at it again. She crosses to remove her earrings. Uh, you know, uh, I've been thinking, we've been together for a while now, and <clears throat> it, it seems like maybe it's time uh, we get a little bit more in intimate. Are you saying that you want to have sex? Yeah, I am. I don't believe in premarital sex. I'd rather not cheapen what we have. Of, of course. Of course not. Uh, me neither. So it's best to wait. You're right. I think, I mean, I mean, you're, it's the best. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we can't pleasure each other in other ways. She steps up to him, sultry. She slides down his front <laughs> to her knees. There in fist pumps. Oh, I got you. Oh, I, I got you. She reaches up to his chest. If, if what? She pulls him to the ground and sits on his face. She shivers as uh. Darren gets into it and she runs her hands through her hair and cut to enter your Judith's house later. They lay in bed. Judith looks quite satisfied. Darren nurses a sore jaw. <clears throat> that was really great. Thanks. She's all curled up and ready to sleep. So, um, that got me pretty excited. That's nice. I mean, um, I, I wouldn't mind if someone did that to me. Oh, I get it. You want me to go down on you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I would love to, but I can't. I have very, very sensitive gums. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, you have gums. It's, um, it's a medical condition. Yeah. Uh, no, I wouldn't want to cause you any pain, baby. No. No. Judah smiles. You're so sweet. She kisses his chest and rolls over ready for bed. Darren's still not giving up though. You know, uh, there are other ways to give me pleasure without using your mouth. Judith sits up and looks at him. Oh god, I am so inconsiderate. I'm sorry. She reaches for a nightstand. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. She plops a copy of Jugs in his lap, followed by a small hand towel and a big bottle of Jerkins lotion. Have fun. She turns off her lamp. Cut to exterior Wayne's house later. Darren and Judith pull up outside the house. Darren opens the car door for her. Oh, watch your head. This place is a dump. I really don't want to do this. Oh, no, come on. It, it'll be great. It, it's our Sunday ritual, and, and I want you to be a part of it. I, I want you to get to know these guys. You're, you're going to love them, honey. The front door opens, and there stands JD. Yeah, buddy. What's up, dude? He gives Darren a low five. Well, what's up, JD? Judy, awesome to meet you. Jude if? Judith. And a beer bong for the lady? Uh, no. Totally cool. No peer pressure. JD does the beer bong sloppily. He blows air at the end of it and <laughs> speaks through it. Judith rules. <laughs> Jared brushes the beer spittle off Judith's shirt. Sorry. Come on in. Into your Wayne's house. Continuous JD walks backwards. Dude, Darren, check it out. Chewy. <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> JD does Chewbacca roar through the beer box as Wayne runs off. Hey, yo! He knocks the beer punk from JD's hands. Hey, you want a drink? Hey, man. Wayne and Darren shake hands. It's clearly been a while since they've seen each other. Gotcha on the rocks? No problem, but you want ice with that? 
Jaren rushes to the rescue. I'll help him. I'll help. I'll help you with that. <clears throat> Darren follows JD into the kitchen. Hey, Judith, can I give you the grand tour? Sure. Let's start here in the Hall O'Neill. <laughs> Wayne shows off his Neil Diamond collection. He points to a Neil Diamond cutout. This is Neil 74. Wayne moves on to the next thing. Judith seems less than impressed. Check this out. He points to a framed piece of paper. This is a set list from a Millennium concert. Look, signed by Neil. Got that on eBay. Looks like a Xerox. She's right. It totally looks like a Xerox. No. Costs a lot of money. Check this out. Wayne walks her to the pride and joy of his collection. I think you got taken. <laughs> Wayne ignores her and walks up to a sequin shirt and a display case. Ready? He hits a button and the case lights up and the shirt starts spinning. This shirt was worn by Neil in concert. Whoa. JD walks up to the case with him. Check it out. We snuck backstage and totally stole it from him while he was taking a whiz. Well, in my profession, we call your obsession with Neil Diamond a delusional projection fantasy. Wayne scoffs. <laughs> yeah, sure. He's America's greatest songwriter and he's our hero. He's playing the forum in two weeks. Of course, we can't go because of the whole, you know, restraining order thing. Exterior Neil Diamond concert backstage flashback. The crowd is going nuts as Neil leaves the show. Neil is pumped to see his fans. Darren, Wayne, and JD are losing their shit. He walks past them and doesn't acknowledge them. JD pushes past the bear kids and rushes Neil to give him a big bear hug. Neil, I love you! Security pulls JD off of him. You again! The guard punches JD in the face. Security pulls JD away. No, Neil! Neil! Neil, hey! Where are you going? <laughs> Neil shakes his head in disgust and gets into his limo. Party with you! I want to party with you! Cut back to Wayne's house present. Judith looks at them, thinking very clearly, these guys are knocking futs. Right. Darren perks up, looking at the TV. Get games on! Games on! JD and Wayne rush to the recliners, sharing the whole way. Ah! Give me the marble! <laughs> Judah tries to get Darren's attention. Want to go. What? I want to leave. Here, give me a beer. Sweetheart, we just got here. These guys are pigs. Come on. No, they're they're not they're not that. Um he looks at Wayne and JD. JD is shoving a damn near whole plate of nachos into his mouth. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Dude, if you get a nacho stuck together, that's one nacho. <laughs> Facts. Darren looks back to Judith. Uh, okay, look, uh, why, don't, why don't we just stay for a little bit, okay? Just, just a little while, huh? Judith sags. Darren walks her around the chairs. Oh, oh, take mine, take mine, take mine. JD pops up and sweeps the excessive amount of chips and popcorn and all kinds of other shit off the chair. Give me the old sweep a -roo. Judith looks even more disgusted, as do I. Yep, old Ethel, we've been through a lot of games together. Enjoy. Judith sits and looks somehow even more uncomfortable than before. Okay, let me help you. She has multiple reclining positions. <laughs> JD starts working at the side of the chair. That's okay. I can sit forward. It's a little. Uh, sorry, it's a little. No, it's fine. It just takes a little muscle. JD starts getting angry with the chair. Come on, you fucking piece of shit. You don't need. I prefer. I got it. It's no problem. The chair suddenly flattens out and Judith goes toppling over the back of the chair. Drinks and nacho mess fly everywhere, including on her face. Everyone jumps up to her. Oh, hey, are you okay? 
They help her to her feet. Whoa. JD pushes the chair seat back up. I'm sorry. That hardly ever happens. You know what? I think I... Yep. It's the lug nut. Fixed it. Please, have a seat. I'll stand. Um, I'm sorry. JD slaps his head a little and then flops over into his chair. Get me something? Yeah. Yep. Do the shirt is covered with salsa. Wayne stands next to her, clearly wanted to say something, but not knowing what. So Darren tells me you're a psychologist. That's right. It's interesting. I'm in a related field. She doesn't believe him for a second. Really? What's that? Pest and rodent removal. How is that related? Even Wayne has to think about it for a second. Uh, we both help people. While you deal with their emotional and intellectual needs, I protect them from gophers, coons, roaches, silverfish. Lost it. Jay jumps up and grabs his beer. All right, touchdown! Wayne and JD dance around, cracking open their beers and shaking them all over, sending beer flying everywhere. Judah screams, getting messier by the second, and hitting this experience more and more by the minute. Jaren tries to cover her from the beer spotter the best he can, but he sucks at it. Cut to interior Judah's car. The car pulls away from the house, burning rubber. I don't want you to see Wayne or JD ever again, Darren. Uh, but they're my best friends. You're getting new friends, and you're quitting that bullshit band. I know you're upset. I, I I do, but I am not dropping Wayne and JD and I'm not quitting the band. Okay, fine. No more sex. What? You are not allowed to go down on me for one month. No, no, Judith, please. Don't make me take away your masturbation privileges. Exterior boardwalk later. Wayne and JD try to play with a replacement who is, well, let's just say, too enthusiastic. He's dancing and shimmying behind the piano. My baby is loving me. Yes, yes, she does. Oh, she tell me all the time. Oh, Cherry. It's <laughs> exactly how the song goes. They only have one person watching them, an older woman dancing to herself. All the time. She says she's going to be showing me tonight. Wayne and JD play their guitars, but neither knows how to join in with the scene with this guy. Oh, Cherry, what are you going to show me? Oh, baby, you got the way to be moving me. Oh, Cherry, baby, you go, boys. You sing this song. You know it. Come on, boys. Come on, sing it. Sing it. <laughs> they play a little bit, but they don't have the groove. This blows, man. Maybe George does. <sighs> Replacement Darren is dancing his ass off. You go, girl. Dude, it's out of control. We gotta do something. Dude, besides ruining the band, what else has she done? What? Ever since she moved in with him, she controlled his life. She didn't like the way his ass looked. She made him get butt cheek implants. Cut to interior operating room. Darren's ass is... <laughs> I forgot about this part. Darren's ass is cut open as the doctor slides a large silicone implant into his cheeks. Darren reacts like, well, that's a weird feeling. The doctor shifts Darren's ass around to get it to the proper shape. Cut back to exterior boardwalk. I thought his ass looked tighter. Check this out. Last night, Torsh's Neil Diamond albums. The music stops. She torched Neil. Cut to exterior Judith's backyard. Judith tosses Darren's Neil Diamond records into an open fire. Darren whimpers with each one. Cut back to exterior boardwalk. You're right. She's a monster. A beat. Two, three, four. Three, four. Cut to exterior beach port walk later. Darren rides up on his scooter. He pulls to a stop and sees JD and Wayne sitting at a small table. Yes. Hey. Guys, I'm sorry I'm late. 
I uh, I only have a minute. I have to wax Judith's legs. Miss you. We never see you anymore. I know. I'm sorry, but I've just been so happy spending time with Judith, you know? Plus my relationship counseling sessions. Counseling? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I go to two, hour, two, hour, three, two hours three times a week. Oh, who's your counselor? Judith. <sighs> Look, we don't think she's right for you. Break up with her. Yeah. She's ruining our lives and yours. This, this graph should illustrate our point. Look. JD pulls out a line chart as Wayne pulls a pointer from his pocket. Before Judith, our fun level was at an all-time high. It is now an eight. Band numbers have plunged dramatically as well. Girls, never really high at nine. But now look, two. This has led to increased whacking off. I'm chafing. Hold on, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Darren's pager goes off because you know, it's the 90s. I have to go home and heat the wax. Guys, <laughs> listen, thanks for your concern, really. And I miss you too, but it was great seeing you all, all right? Um, Darren leaves Wayne and JD looking a little defeated. I just noticed that the restaurant says they're sitting at is called Siemens. <laughs> Siemens. I get it. Get it? Do you get it? Eric that guy is it. in Whoa. serious trouble. Yeah. And we need to save him. Interior Judith's office later. The door to Judith's office opens and in walk Wayne and JD. Sorry to bother you. What are you doing here? Uh, well, first we want to apologize for the beer shower. And the salsa bath. That, that was bad. Get the hell out of here. Whoa, wait. Just give us a minute, okay? My rate is $200 an hour. You have any you money? Have any money? Wayne and JD start brooding around in their pockets, pulling out whatever crinkle bills they can find. I got some of that. Uh, just give me the, I mean, give me the big bills. Six, is that all you have? Hmm. Excuse me. They count up the little they have. Seven, thir 38. Judith grabs a timer on her desk and starts it. Two and a half minutes. Okay, look. We don't want you seeing Darren. We don't think you're right for him. The band needs him. But we're prepared to buy you off. With what? My house. Okay, look. They pull out a framed photo of Wayne's house. Wayne realizes it's upside down and he writes it. He commentates on the photo. My grandma here, she was born in this house, is buried in the backyard. There's my mom. There's my dad. There's me. My dad is dropping me on my head. <laughs> but we're, we're willing to sign this over to you if you agree not to see Darren. I don't want your shitty house or your dead grandma. I'll throw, in, I'll throw JD in. He, he doesn't look like much, but he's become like a horse. True. Look, Darren's mine. There's nothing you can do about it. I own him. He does whatever I say. I am in complete control of him. He is my puppet, and I am his puppet master. You're not taking Darren away from us! Just try and stop me. Wayne sits next to her desk and challenge is her okay. arm to an arm wrestling contest. Okay, one round. Winner takes Darren. You're on. Kick her ass. Go. Wayne starts trying. Right hard, but Judas arm holds steady. You've got quite a grip. You must be a heavy masturbator. My guess is three times a day. Oh shit. She's playing the mind games. This is getting to Wayne a little bit. I bet you're a premature ejaculator. You start off with a big bang. Before you know it, it's... Wham! She slams his hand to the table. You're limp. The timer on the desk beeps. Time's up. I win, you lose. Now get out. 
<laughs> they storm out. Wayne tries to bend her lamp out of proportion or position, but it's an adjustable lamp, so it does nothing. Exterior, Madame Wong's. Later, Wayne's van pulls up to a couple of prostitutes on the street. Hey, <laughs> hey baby. Hello, ladies. <laughs> So how much? 50 bucks for you and 200 for your friend. Chidi turns his chair to look at Wayne. Okay. All right. Cut to interior bar that night. Photo montage. JD is taking photos, directing Wayne with the ladies. to be laughing like he just said something. Tanya laughs as JD snaps the photo. Wayne sits flanked by the girls. Perfect! JD is trying to guide them in a sexy dance. Get this one. Be like this. Like this. JD is basically butt-fucking the air. Douche! Douche! On the dance floor. Yeah, you slap his ass! Wayne is dancing mm. like a seizure, just spasming around the dance floor. JD stops him. That's not sexy. Yeah. Back at Wayne's house, Wayne and the girls play topless ping pong because, oh my God, that's what you do. And Wayne and Tanya high five. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> You're killing me. JD takes a close up photos of Tammy's boobies. JD lays on the table. Wayne is just smacking ping pong balls. Is our ping pong balls a euphemism? At his head. JD is getting annoyed. Watch it. I think you said watch it. More balls fly. <laughs> Here goes your social life. Sorry, clueless. I was just thinking about that. Eventually, JD starts grabbing them and throwing them back. Wayne plays topless chess with Tanya. You're moving my guy! Wayne reaches for a piece between Tanya's boobsicles. Yeah! <laughs> Tanya cracks a beer, which all foams over the table. Can no one in this movie open a beer without wasting half of it? That's such a waste of money, especially nowadays since gas is like a billion dollars and so are groceries. Anyway, uh, the copy plays. JD and Wayne are cutting out Darren's face from different photos. Oh, look it, look it! Wayne's glues da Wayne glues Darren's head over his in the photos. They photocopy them a few times. Dude, check this out. JD and Wayne laugh, thinking the photos look <laughs> great. At a mailbox, Wayne and JD drop a large manila envelope into the box, scampering away. Hurry up, let's go. Mail, check, check you go. Don't look back. Hurry up, punk. <laughs> Interior Wayne's house later, there's a knock at the door. Wayne and G open Wayne and JD open it to see Judith. Holding the envelope. Hey, Judith, how's it going? Not so good. Look at these. She pulls out the photos and hands them to Wayne. Oh, my God. Oh, he's sick. He's perverted. He's cheating on you with two chicks. I don't know. I guess I dump them. Oh, totally. Right? Yeah. Did you guys notice anything weird about these photos? Um, uh, no. No. That's Darren, all right. Judith reaches forward and tears the sleeve off Wayne's shirt. Hey! She exposes Wayne's shoulder. Darren doesn't have a tattoo. She, she snatches the photos back. Nice try, idiots. If I ever see either of you near Darren again, I'll kill you. I mean, 
she did marry Bruce Willis in the whole nine yards, so I believe her. Interior Tomato Neighborhood Bistro. That's a weird name. Later, Darren walks up to Wayne and JD. Hey. Hey. Hey! hey. Thanks for meeting me here. I, I have something really important to say. Ah, oh, man. You broke up. Oh. No. 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 Uh, out of the blue, Judith proposed to me. We're we're engaged. What, dude? Congratulations! Wayne stomps ah. on JD's foot, but JD stifles the pain. Yeah, yeah. Starting next week, I'll be known as Mr. Darren Festmegler. Oh, right, because you're gonna take her last name, huh? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Judith feels and. And I think she's got a really good point here that it's it's sexist for the woman to take the man's last name. Huh. Anyway, it's too late to make any changes. We've already ordered the monogram towels. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> From behind Darren, in walks <gasps> Sandy. Oh, that's me. Darren? Sandy? S Sandy Perkis? Darren gets up and gives her a hug. Oh my god, Darren, it's been so long. Yeah, yeah, it has. Wayne is clapping. <laughs> hey, it's Wayne! She, she clearly doesn't recognize him. High school, remember? You remember? Wayne starts robot dancing. You can dance if you want to. You can leave your friends behind. But if your friends don't dance, and if you don't dance... Oh, right. The uh, <clears throat> senior talent show. Yeah. You were booed off stage? <laughs> that was me. Yep. Hey, Sandy, remember me, J.D. McNugent? I went to the prom with the tuxedo painted on my naked body. <gasps> oh, um, I guess I missed it. Oh, I spilled a drink and the paint ran and everyone could see my dong. Doesn't ring a bell. Oh, oh, oh. Remember that time in science class? I was lighting farts with a Bunsen burger and I singed my ball sack? Oh. Uh, no. Man. I still can't grow hair on my left nut. Sucks. Thanks for making it awkward there, J.D. Darren turns back to Sandy. So how are you? <clears throat> great, great. I uh, just moved back to town. Oh, wow. That's great. Sandy. Oh, gosh. You know, I, I have to go, but it was really great seeing you. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. Me, me too. They had. Oh, bye. Bye. Wayne goes for a hug too. It's it's awkward. Uh, you. Take care. JD goes for a hug too. Awesome. Uh, she doesn't even fully hug JD. Can just continue. We not okay. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Wow. Oh my God! This is it. What? It's your big chance. Cindy purchase just walk back into your life. You even said to yourself, she was your one and only someone. Yeah, she used to be. Now, now Judith is my one and only someone. I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Jaren leaves JD, looks to Wayne. Isn't one and only, like, one and only? Interior Judith's house later. Judith is hosting an engagement party. Darren brings her a martini. Here's your drink. Where's the lemon wedge? Sorry, we're, we're out of lemons, but I, I can go run to the store. Forget it. I want you to meet two exciting people. She takes Darren's arm and guides him over to some people. She puts the drink he just made her on a passing server's tray. What a bitch. Brett is a tax attorney and Clayton's a CPA. Wow. That is exciting. This is my fiance, Darren. 
Pleased to meet you. Same here. Congratulations. Thank you. There's a knock at the door. Excuse me, I'll get it. Judith leaves Darren there and opens the door. Standing on the porch are Wayne and JD holding a helmet. Hi. Hi, uh, is Darren here? I, I think he left his Vespa helmet. What's going on? We're having our engagement party. Oh, then I guess your invitations must have been lost in the mail. No. I think it's very possible, Wayne, that she didn't even send us invitations. Judith snatches the helmet from them. Thanks for stopping by. She tries to close the door on them, but JD stops it. Who's Darren talking to? Those are his new friends. JD pushes past her. They walk up to Darren, Brett, and Clayton. Brett and Clayton try to hand their empty drinks to Wayne and JD. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, uh, good. I'll have a Merlot, a spritzer. You don't work here. Oh, well, you fooled me. Uh, my name's Brett. Uh, this is Clayton. Oh, and this is Darren. Yeah, we know who he is, Clayton. Darren's our friend, Brett. We knew him first. Die, replacement friend! Hey, that's Frank Wayne! <laughs> Wayne grabs Clayton's collar and they start fighting. JD and Wayne throw food in their faces. Aaron, stop them. Do something. <laughs> Eventually, JD and, JD and Wayne are grabbed by the guys there and are thrown out. Get out of here. Exterior, Judith's house. Wayne and JD are tossed onto the porch. They run down the stairs and turn back. Hey, this isn't over yet. I'm giving up on Darren. They run away into your Wayne's truck. <laughs> she thinks this game is over. No! Right? We're taking this into overtime. Yeah! yeah! Okay, strategy session. Okay, our enemy is wicked. Freddy Krueger. No, Damien. Dude, she's Vader. No, she's the Emperor. But with really great tits. Okay, now, Sin. That girl, she's a nice girl. Oh, yeah. She's a sweetheart. Dude, a saint. A goddess. A princess. You know what? She's kind of like Mother Teresa. Yeah, but with way better boobies. And Darren loves Sandy no matter what he says. Definitely. And that's why we have to intervene and fix the problem. Definitely. All right. Yeah. We're going to kidnap Judith and set Darren up with Sandy. Yeah. What? <laughs> Exterior Judith's house. That night, Darren rides away from the house. JD pokes his pantyhose clad head out from behind a tree. <laughs> is leaving the cave. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, did JD say his line? <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Bat is leaving the cave. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there's glitter on those is just killing me. Wayne is strapped to a power pole, his face covered in military grease paint. <laughs> Roger that. He, I, hope, I can't. He uses bolt cutters and cuts a wire, sending sparks flying. The building across the street loses power. Wayne looks at Judith's place, which is still lit up. Oh. He cuts another wire and sparks shoot into his face. 
<laughs> Alarm system has been deactivated. Out. Roger that. Dude, you don't have to make the sound. It already does that. Out. Copy that. I'm not going to make the sound after I say stuff from now on. J.D. McNugent, over and out. That was the last one. <laughs> Interior Judas House minutes later, Wayne and J.D. peek up. Just, Jesus Christ. Wayne and J.D. peek up from behind the couch. J.D. hiding behind a potted plant. <laughs> <clears throat> scared. What if we get caught? What can happen? <laughs> they sneak towards the stairs. I'm hungry. We'll eat later. Do we want a happy burger? Yes, after the kidnapping. I'm gonna get a chubby checker. Like, <laughs> the cheese. Wayne sags. They reach the bottom of the stairs and Wayne starts signaling. JD misses, is missing all of it because he's looking over the other way. Wayne tries to get his attention, but nothing is really working. <laughs> this catches JD's attention. He looks at Wayne, who starts signaling in military signals. What? Wayne does the signals again. JD doesn't get what he's saying. JD starts doing signals of his own, indicating that they'll get food later after he's going to take a big bite of it, and Wayne shakes him off. You go downstairs. I'll check upstairs. Doing the Navy SEAL signals. Come on. I only know the Air Force signals. <laughs> Wayne reaches the top of the stairs. I'll be on lookout. Wayne rushes, shushes him. Oh. Wayne draws his trank gun and searches the rooms. Back downstairs, JD is eating leftover spaghetti from the fridge. <laughs> I haven't located her yet. Either. Keep checking. Wait a minute. I think I see something in the back of the in the back of the closet. Check it out. Nope. Oh, this is clear. I'll keep looking down here, buddy. You keep get you keep your eyes peeled up there. <laughs> Wayne pushes open the door to Jesus' room and sees her asleep in the bed. He creeps across the room, his trank gun trained on her. The floor creaks and Judith wakes up with a gasp. She kicks at the gun and it fires a dart directly into Wayne's leg. Oh, oh shit! Ah! JD, JD tries not to choke on spaghetti before answering. What is it? I'm it. I need backup. Wayne falls to the ground with a heavy thud. <laughs> Judith hops down from the bed as JD comes to the doorway. What happened? Judith strikes martial arts pose and JD gets scared. Running from the room with a whimper, Judith <laughs> runs after him. JD ducks into the downstairs bathroom and locks the door before jumping into the shower and pulling the curtain closed. He stands there, silent, hoping it's enough to hide. Judith kicks the door open and walks straight to the shower, not breaking stride at all. She pulls the curtain back. JD laughs nervously. She grabs his hair and yanks him from the tub before dragging him into the toilet. She kicks his knee out and he drops. Ow! Help! She proceeds to shove his head into the toilet and hold him underwater. Smiley time. Back upstairs, Wayne sits up, drool cascading down his chin. He pulls the dart from his leg. Judith dunks JD again. Wayne shuffles out of her room and towards the stairs. Dead leg. <laughs> Wayne misses his grip and falls, thudding to the ground again. JD is still being drowned. Help me, Wayne! Wayne tries his best to get down the stairs, finally succeeding. He pushes open the bathroom door and pulls out a cattle prod from his belt. 
Judith kicks him square in the gut, dropping him to the ground. Wayne recovers and jabs her with the prod. He shocks her in the ass, the charge carrying through her and into JD, into the toilet bowl. Eventually, Judith drops to the ground. Exterior Judith's house. JD runs for the car as Wayne carries Judith over his shoulder. Get the door! Get the do door! Wayne flops Judith down in the back seat. They quickly load in and drive away just as Darren pulls back up on his scooter. I've always wondered, what the hell? he go to do has he is he got he was gone like 10 minutes tops interior judith's house darren walks into the bedroom judith of course she's not there judith he notices a note on the table next to him darren i'm leaving you we're we're finished done don't call write email or fax i i never want to see your face or your fake butt again darren cries interior wayne's garage judith wakes up on the couch she notices the chain hooked to her ankle and gets up she walks for the door only she sees but she reaches the end of her chain nearly tripping she looks <clears throat> up to the door above and sees a camera taped to the ceiling. Interior, Wayne's living room. J.D. and Wayne watch Judith on the TV. Okay, get down there. Dude, hey, why me? Because you're guarding Judith and I'm dealing with Darren and Sandy. But when we let go, she'll identify. No, she won't be able to because she won't be able to because you'll be wearing this. Wayne holds up JD's hawk mascot suit. But after we let Judith stop looking for a guy dressed in a bird suit. So? So what am I going to wear at work? Your work <laughs> clothes. Hey. Get downstairs! Interior Wayne's garage. Moments later, the door swings open and in walks JD in his costume. Judith stops messing with her chain and eyes the big bird. JD puts a tray of food down on the table in front of her. A big bologna sandwich... And a bunch of Cheetos. Who the hell are you? JD says nothing and backs out of the garage, shutting the door behind him. Judith looks after him in disbelief. Exterior, adult bookstore. The next day, Wayne waits anxiously for Sandy. She walks up behind him. Hi. Hey, Sandy, hi. They awkwardly hug. Um... Hi, uh, y yeah. Uh, thanks for meeting me. I, sorry, I called you out of the blue. Uh, that's okay. I, I love catching up with old high school friends. Are you single? Yes. Great. Look, I want to talk to you about Darren Silverman. He's a really good guy. You know what? He, he, he works with the elderly. Really? Yeah. That's so sweet. You know, he still talks about you all the time. Wayne, you know what? There's something... He just... even writes poems about you. In fact, I think he loves you! Wayne, I'm becoming a nun. Huh? Yeah, in a week I, I take my final vows. Um, I didn't even know that you were religious. Oh, well... I wasn't in high school, but after I graduated, I, I went and I, I joined my parents in the circus and I became a trapeze artist. Interior circus, flashback. Sandy stands on a trapeze mid-show. I fell in love with my partner, Luigi, Luigi Panini. Ladies and gentlemen, the fashion, fabulous Luigi. Um, Luigi poses for the crowd. <clears throat> well, and everything was perfect until, well, Two sleazy guys in a suit to applaud. Talent scouts were in the audience. Sleazy guys, talent scouts, same difference. Luigi slicks back his hair with lots of hair gel. And, yeah, lots of hair gels before checking himself out in the hand mirror. Luigi wanted to impress them. He, he was a great trapeze artist, but he was completely vain. And now, Luigi will attempt the most dangerous stunt in the history of trapeze. The quadruple beermen. 
Cena and Luigi swing towards each other. After a swing or two, Luigi lets go and flipping through the air with ease. He does three flips, a full 720, and then three more flips before being caught by Sandy. But his hands are still caked in gel. Oh, he's slipping. He starts slipping. Eventually, he falls from Sandy's grip and drops to the ground. <gasps> Luigi. The crowd gasps as Luigi splats. Exterior, adult bookstore, present day. Wow. Yeah. So after um, <clears throat> Luigi died, that's, you know, I knew I would never love again. That's when I decided to devote my life to serving the Lord and helping others. So you haven't taken your final vows yet, right? Right. So technically, you're not a nun yet. Well, no, I mean, not yet. So... Why not just have lunch with Darren? I guess he makes a good point. Enter your bar later, JD. He sits at the bar with Darren. I, I can't figure out why Judith left. It, it doesn't make any sense. She didn't even take her clothes. She went she didn't need clothes. I don't think so. Maybe she... You think? No. No, no, definitely. That's a, well, it's like, why would that happen in a world? Maybe he's a lesbian. Come on. Herm. A what? Yeah, like a hermaphrodite. Little dick, little puss. Wow. Before they could go, Wayne walks in. Hey, guess who I bumped into today? Who? Sandy Perkins, and she wants to see you. I'm engaged to Judith, Wayne. Don't you, dude? Just have lunch with Sandy. What's it gonna hurt? No way. Judith is coming back. And what if she doesn't? As long as Judith's alive, I'll never give up on her, okay? Okay? Challenge. Challenge accepted. Excuse me. Cut to exterior graveyard that night. JD digs up a body as Wayne keeps lookout. Yeah. Wayne hands JD the crowbar. Wood splinters. A beat. Oh my god. What is it? Dead chicken. Cut to exterior quarry later. JD and Wayne are pushing a car towards the cliff's edge, the dead body in the front seat. Okay, go, go, go. Wayne lets go, but JD stays, pushing the car, unable to pull away. What are you doing? Jacket! We'll take it off! Close this jacket! Close it! Oh. <laughs> After a beat, JD spins out of his jacket, frustrated. I didn't hear any of those whys, but I felt it. The car goes over the cliff and explodes into a large fireball. Wayne and JD overlook the wreckage. Favorite jacket. Wayne throws an arm around JD and they leave. Interior, Judith's house. Darren watches TV. In a bizarre incident last night, Judith Thespegler was incinerated beyond recognition when her BMW careened off a cliff. Investigators have declared it an accident. No foul play is suspected. Darren sits up quite upset. So upset he misses the next story. In unrelated news, the body of deceased local Joan Snur was dug up in an apparent grave robbing last night. Police have arrested three Cuban nationals. <laughs> Darren sobs. Interior Wayne's garage. JD enters once again in his mascot suit. He puts down a tray of food and a small pile of clothes. <laughs> Why are you doing this? So you can eat and have something to wear. No. Why did you kidnap me? I'm not supposed to tell you. Oh, I get it. The other guy's the boss. No, I make decisions too. I suggested that. He points to the porta potty behind her. An outhouse, clever. Thanks. You must be very well educated. 
I suppose. Ivy League? More or less. Which one? Yale? Harvard? Princeton? S-U. Oh, Stanford University? Subway U University. Oh, yeah. Wait. I knew someone who went there. Did you know J.D. McNugent? No, no. Never heard of such a person, ever. Oh, well. See you later, J.D. Yeah, take it easy, Judith. Uh, beat as Judith smiles. God damn it! He slams the door into your Wayne's living room. She knows who we are! Dude, there was nothing I could do. She used her super intellect on me, man. She's like Hannibal Lecter. <sighs> Great, now we can't let her go. So what are we gonna do? Interior prison, coach walks up to the boys, still in cuffs. Go, coach! If it ain't my favorite third string quarterback and the best damn mascot we in high school ever had. Go! J.D. dances around, reliving his mascot days. Yeah, look, he's still got it. All right. Ah, uh, it's good seeing you, boys. Thank you for coming to my trial. Oh, no problem. We were happy to act as witnesses on your behalf. That ref blue. He deserved what he got. Exterior football field flashback. The QB throws a pass, which is caught in the end zone. Sports. Touchdown. <laughs> No touchdown! No touchdown! He's out of bounds! What? Out of bounds! Coach picks up on the down markers and throws it across the field like a javelin. The crowd watches it fly as it lands with a thunk. Uh, oh! oh. oh. Whoops. The javelin waves back and forth, sticking out of the chest of the ref. Interior prison present. Coach sits at a table with Wayne and JD. So you think after you get out of prison, they'll let, you, they'll let you get your old job back? Well, boys, I don't think so. So when are they going to let you out? Well, I've got an appeal pending, but it doesn't look good. The victim's whiny family's protest. What is their damn problem? So what brings you boys here today? Well, coach, we need your advice. Okay, shoot. Darren fell in love with this girl, Judith. And we kidnapped her. Kill her. Okay. You see, no, wait a minute. Let me finish. So we screwed up because she knows who we are. So we can't let her go or she'll turn us in. Is that it? Is that everything? They nod. Yeah. Hmm. Kill her. <laughs> well, we can't kill her. Well, sure you can. You're Wheaton Warbirds. You can do anything you put your minds to. Yeah, but coach, I mean, come on. You can't actually kill a person. What is it that I always say? If you, you can, can dream, dream it, you, you can, can do, do it. it. Exactly. You have the dream. All you have to do is turn into reality. Okay. That a boy. Now go on home and stuff that bitch. Come on, move. Thanks, coach. Hop, 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 hop. Coach chuckles to himself. Enter your Wayne's garage. JD and Wayne push open the door, holding a gun together. They aim it at Judith, who is just chilling, reading a magazine. Where is your bird suit? I don't need it because we're we're, we're, we're going to kill you, right? Right. You guys are going to shoot me. Oh, yeah? What makes you say that? Because you're not killers. Sure we are. You've never killed anyone. I killed a man once. Oh, really? Yeah. Who? Kevin Beckley. You didn't kill Kevin Beckley. He died in a car wreck. She doesn't know that. Oh, oh, oh. You see, you guys have never killed anything in your entire lives. Oh, yeah? One time I was driving, the squirrel ran out in the street, and I ran over him, and he didn't die right then. But he was limping and stuff. I'm pretty sure he died right after that. Look, it doesn't matter if we've killed anybody or not. 
We're going to do it right now. They point the gun at her, and Judith looks at them, still not convinced. Ready? Ready. They hold the gun. A beat. Do it. I can't. God. <laughs> they huff out. God damn it. They slam the door behind them. Judith smiles and goes back to reading interior Judith's house. Darren lights a candle in memories of in memory of Judith. Wayne walks in behind him. Okay, it's Tuesday. So you're meeting Sandy for lunch. Can't you see I'm in mourning? Right. We promised you'd be there. You gave her your word. I, I didn't even talk to her. Okay, I give you, gave her your word. For God's sakes, Wayne, when are you going to give up on this idea that I'll go out with Sandy? When you go out with Sandy. Now, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, 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 Sandy, hey, uh, wow, you're wearing the, um... I'm training uh, to become a nun. A nun! Well, that explains it. I hope it doesn't freak you out. No, it doesn't. Actually, I'm relieved. I think Wayne was trying to set us up on a date. <laughs> yeah, he's got some crazy ideas. Yeah. Well, now that I know that you're unavailable, it makes this easier. We can just be friends. Yes, exactly. Friends. They go sit and Darren stops to pull out her chair. Please. Thank you. Sure. He sits as well. So how are your parents? Oh, great. They're making a fortune on the internet. Is it porn? I bet it's porn. Uh, they started their own website, uh, circusfreak.com. Get in on it or got it in one. Uh, <clears throat> wow, good for them. And and how's your brother, dog face boy? Oh, he got rabies. God, that's too bad. Yeah, I, it, for a while there, we thought we were going to have to have him put down, but he recovered. Oh, good. Good. So how are you? Oh, me? Uh, I'm great. Yeah, everything's been really good, you know? Yeah, well, my fiancé died. She died? Yeah, she's dead. I'm so sorry. Oh, don't be. Uh, please don't be. Sorry, it's nothing. So. He picks up the menu. So, mmm, mmm. How do you feel about, um... <laughs> Darren starts sobbing behind the menu. Oh, oh no. Oh. She crosses to his side trying to comfort him. Oh, oh gosh. Um, just cry. Just let it go. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm here for you, okay? I'm here for you. Thank you. Hello, my friend. <sighs> Hello. It's good to need you so. It's good to need you so. Wait, wait a minute, wait. You're, you're a Neil Diamond fan too? Oh, the man. He's a genius. <laughs> yeah! He's the greatest songwriter performer of this or any generation. I know! Like, it's good to love you like I do. And to feel this way when I hear you say hello, hello, Darren oh. is enthralled. Oh, God, what? Wow.
I bet you bought some more videos. <laughs> yes, you did. Interior Wayne's Garage JD hold, enters holding a box of videotapes. Hey, brought you some more videos. You got your choice of porno or monster trucks. Oh, and, and I got you one that's both. Thanks, JD. Hey, I really appreciate you taking care of me. Oh, my pleasure. Hey, you strike me as a pretty responsible guy. Thanks. That's why I'm surprised that you let Wayne boss you around. Wayne's not, no one bosses me around. Wayne's not the boss of me. Yeah, I think that you seem depressed and confused. You think? Not to mention, I think you have a self-defeating personality disorder. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Have you considered therapy? He thinks about it for a second. Exterior boardwalk. Darren and Sandy walk along the boardwalk holding hands. Oh, I remember in high school, you were really into helping people. At parties, you were always the designated driver. Right? And and I remember you were, you were a really good dancer and strong, too. You used to be able to lift me up over your head. Oh, still can. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. She steps behind him and puts her hands on his hips. Ready? And... She lifts him up overhead, throwing him up off the boardwalk and into the ocean. <gasps> oh, Darren! Oh, help me! <laughs> Are you okay? I can't. Just hang on. I can't swim. Sandy dives in and helps him to shore. I got you! Darren falls to the sand. <clears throat> Darren? Are you okay? He breathes hard. Oh, thank you. Thank you for saving me. No problem. She goes in for a romantic kiss before their lips connect. Darren turns back and pukes the water all over his mouth. Let it out now. Let it out. There you go. There you go. Come on. Let's go, okay? Uh, you're a lot stronger than you were in high school. Yeah, well, the convent's got a great gym. Oh. Yeah. Interior Wayne's garage. JD lays on the couch in a full-on therapy session. Ever since then, I've been afraid of toilets. Oh, what else can I tell you about the second grade? JD, let's fast forward. Have you ever had a girlfriend? Yes. you ever fantasized about having sex with a man? Which man? Any man. You mean like a tall man? Sure, whatever. I don't like tall people, they bother me. How about a short man? How short? Sometimes people can be too short, that's weird, like midgets. Have you ever fantasized about having sex with any man? Any man at all? Does that include celebrities? your laundromat. <clears throat> Darren is pulling clothes from the dry river. Sandy is wrapped in his coat. Uh, can I ask you something? Sure. I mean, not that it matters now, but uh, if I had asked you out back in high school, would you, would you have gone out with me? Definitely. Not that, not that it matters now, you know? Right, of course. Yeah, right? <laughs> Darren opens another dryer and pulls out her frock. Perfect. Thanks. She steps behind a hanging shirt. Uh, could you know, like, turn around? Oh, right. Yeah, certainly. He turns around and she strips off the coat. Oh, yeah. He reaches into the dryer and pulls out her pink undies. Oh, I have these. He turns to hand them to her. Sandy turns, topless. She covers herself. Oh, sorry, sorry. Those are, um... Uh, her hands, her the undies. Thanks. Um, Darren looks away, catching a glimpse of her reflection in the dryer floor, pulling up her underwear, and... It was at this moment Darren developed a nun fetish. <laughs> Dum dum dum. She pulls up her frock and crosses to Darren. 
Can you zip me up? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. I had a really good time. Uh, me, me too. Do you want to have dinner tonight? Oh, God, I, I can't. Um, tomorrow I have a test in my catechism class, and I have to score at least an 85 so I can take the, my final vows on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, what, what about tomorrow? Um, tomorrow night I'm scheduled to take care of an elderly nun on her deathbed. I, I understand. But I'd really like to see you again. I'll get out of it. <laughs> Interior Wayne's garage. JD cries as Judith rubs his back. <laughs> I always knew I was different and now I know why. I'm gay. You're the only person who's ever truly understood me. <laughs> Judith sneaks behind him grabbing a lamp. It's okay. Just let it out. She smashes the lamp over his head, knocking him down. Exterior Wayne's house. Wayne hops out of his truck and heads inside. Interior Wayne's garage. Judith takes the keys from Davy's pocket and locks her chains. She runs up the stairs, but her exit is blocked by Wayne coming home. She runs back upstairs. Ah! <laughs> Every time. Wayne runs past his room and sees an open window. He crosses to it, trying to see where she got to. Judith comes out from behind the door and flips Wayne out over the over uh, out of the open window. He tumbles to the ground. Thump. JD comes in and looks out the window. Wayne? Wayne! Judith flips him out the window too. He tumbles ah! down the roof and lands next to Wayne. Uh, Judith escaped! Uh! <laughs> Exterior Wayne's house. Judith runs out of the house and into the night. They see her running. Get to the truck! Go! 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 Ow! 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 Oh my god, I love you guys. Exterior streets. JD is scootering home. He sees Judith running across the street, but he she keeps running. Judith? He swerves and crashes. Wayne and JD drive in the van. On lookout for Judith, JD wears a night vision goggles. Okay, she can't be far. I see her. We're gay. Okay, steady, steady. JD fires the trank gun, but misses and breaks a window. I missed her. They pull over. Now let's go, go, go. You go this way, I'll go that way. Go. All right, all right. They split up. Excuse me. Sorry. Exterior random house. Judith runs up to a house and starts banging on the door. Open up. I've been kidnapped. Upstairs, an old man masturbates. He hears the commotion and stops. He opens the window and looks down. <laughs> Hold your goddamn horses. <laughs> oh, thank God. Hurry up. <laughs> the old man likes to look at Judith. He closes the window and starts downstairs. Tonight, Mr. Chang gets lucky. Young lady, so horny, so impatient. Oh my god. He trips at the top of the stairs and falls and he hits the landing in pain. Oh, screwed him. <laughs> Judith turns and runs. JD comes through the bushes. Dude, she's still in the truck. Come on. Exterior streets. Judith starts up the truck and drives away. JD and Wayne come running for the truck. Oh! Come on! I got her! JD somehow keeps up with the truck, jumping onto the side and opening the passenger door. Okay, Judith. It's over. You might as well turn this thing around and head back to the house. She pulls out the cattle prod and shocks the shit out of his junk. <laughs> yeah, girl. He sputters and falls to the street. Exterior police station, Judith swerves the truck into the lot. She jumps from the truck and towards the front entrance. She makes it a few steps before something pegs her in the ass. She looks down and sees a dart. Her vision blurs and she can just barely make out Wayne behind her, the cruiser. She passes out. Wayne comes out on a bike and rides towards her. He lets the bike go, pulls a large tarp out of his truck. He throws it over just as two cops come out of the building. Hi, officers. You're safe. I'm Cowboy Wayne. I just bagged me one of them killer goats that escaped from the zoo. 
Good job. Yeah. Okay, then. Well, I'll see you later. Uh, Wade picks up the unconscious Judith and moves her closer to the truck. Into your Wayne's garage, Judith now sits, chained to a chair. Ugh. There. That should hold you for tonight. She kicks at him. <laughs> Wayne heads upstairs. Uh, interior Wayne's living room. JD sits in a chair. Ice in his bollocks. Hey, what the hell happened? Well, Judith was giving me some therapy and helped me realize I was gay. And the next thing I... Wait, what? Wayne chuckles. I see what happened. She messed with your head. Wayne, I'm gay. No, you're not. You're just unsuccessful with women. No, I'm gay. Judith got me in touch with the inner JD. How'd she do that? She listened. Unlike other people who have known me for years and ignored all the telltale signs. Like what? Like my obsession with Bette Midler. My preference for track lighting. Oh, and the fact that I like sucking dick. What? You've done that? <laughs> no, I mean, not with another guy, but remember when I bought that book on yoga? That's enough. I don't want to hear any more. Look, you want to be gay? Fine. No problem. From now on, I'll tear, I'll take care of Judith myself, okay? Okay. Wayne flops under the recliner next to JD. You want to be gay with me? No! Wayne gets up and storms off upstairs. All right. Interior convent weight room. A few nuns are boxing. Others are lifting weights. Come on, go. Come on. All of you, all of you. Eleven. Okay. Uh, Mother Superior is spotting Sandy, who is lifting at the bench. One more. One more. Come on. One more. Feel the burn. Come on now. Eleven. Mm -hmm. Sandy finishes, Sandy finishes her rep and they cradle the weight. <sighs> What's the matter, dear? You never used to be so winded after only five sets. They switch positions and Sandy hands her the weight. Well, Mother Superior, I'm, I'm having some second thoughts on becoming a nun. Oh, don't get me wrong. This, this is a terrific convent, but I... I... But? Well, I'm having these feelings. What kind of feelings? Sandy's too shy to say. You mean sexual feelings? A few of the other nuns look over the conversation. Some horny, 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 horny nuns. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's so much more than that. Yes, well. She hands Sandy back the weight. My dear, you're the only one who can decide if this is the life you want to live. But once you take your final vows, there's no going back. Over here in my eye, I apologize. Sandy nods, knowing she's right. Now let's go bust out some power squats. Okay. <clears throat> uh, interior Wayne's garage. Oh, sorry. Uh, Wayne finishes chaining Judith to the chair. There. That should keep you from escaping again. And this. He pulls out a large catcher's mask from the back. This should keep you from biting. He shoves it onto her head. How am I going to eat? I thought of that. He pulls out a horrifying looking smoothie. What is that? It's breakfast. It's a pancake, sausage, hash brown, pop tart, and puree. I'm not eating that shit. I want a big Montana. What? A big Montana from Arby's Curly Fries. No, I'm going to get, I'm not going to get you one. If you don't want to eat what I made for you, you can starve. Why are you doing this? Only way to save our friendship. It doesn't seem like a friendship to me. It seems like you're in love with Darren. Bullshit! Just admit it. Your buddy smokes pole and so do you. I am so ungay! Okay, fine. Let's pretend you're straight. When's the last time you got any? That's not in your business! So it's been years. I'm waiting for the right woman. There is no right woman for you, Wayne. My guess is if there ever was, you've already met her and she's killed herself or become a lesbian. Bite me! Blow me! Stay! 
eunuch. Stellar, oh my friend! Jesus, that was rough. Interior, nice restaurant that night. Uh, Taryn sits at a table as Sandy walks up. <laughs> hi. Hey, hi. <gasps> what happened to your head? Oh, um, well, I, I saw Judith. Judith's dead. Yeah, but I could have sworn it was her. I was... He mimes his crash on the scooter. Oh, you poor thing. You're still not over her death. Maybe we shouldn't be seeing each other. No, 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 no. God, I'm I'm fine. And and look, I, I can deal with this, okay? Okay. Okay. They pick up the menus. Um, <clears throat> so, um, what are you having? Uh, let's see. Uh, there's the duck. That was always Judith's favorite. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I should leave. No, no, you shouldn't. I, I'm so sorry. I will never mention Judith's name again. Really, I swear. I swear. Hey, uh, w would you excuse me for a moment, please? I'll, I'll be right back, okay? In 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 a moment. Okay. Uh, Darren, leave Sandy there. Boop. Uh, interior Wayne's living room. Wayne is doing yoga, trying to suck his own dick. God damn it! The phone rings. <laughs> hey Eric. <laughs> I don't see you doing yoga. <laughs> maybe maybe downward facing dog works best jeremy i think it's your line oh okay uh, what do you want wayne it's me darren look there's a problem i'm with sandy but i can't stop talking about judith okay i'll be right down Wayne hangs up and then tries to figure out how he's getting up. Next to your nice dress run. <laughs> Minutes later, Darren, or I'm sorry, Wayne pulls up in his truck. Jared, oh, this is, I'm not in the scene. Uh, Darren runs up and hops inside. Wayne turns to him. I think Wayne's still putting on his shirt and uh. Stopping sucking his own dick. Still true. <sighs> okay, open your shirt. Why? Just do it. Wayne pull puts small pads on Darren's nipples. What is this? <laughs> okay, now here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna listen to your conversation. He adds, oh God, he adds clamps to the nipple pads. Oh yeah. Now, if you say anything about Judith or so much as mention her name, I'm going to give you a little shock. <laughs> Ow! Ow! Perfect. Ow! Ow! Okay? I don't think I'm comfortable having these things on my nipples. I could put them on your balls. The nipples are fine. Nipples work. Wayne slaps Darren's leg. Okay. Interior nice restaurant. Sandy sits at their table, bored. Darren looks back up to, walks back up, hurries back up to the table. I can't read. Hi. Hi. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm back. I am back. There was a talkative men's room attendant. He checks his nipple pads. Subtly. Tenderly. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Wayne grabs a table up on the balcony, trying to go incognito, for which Wayne means wearing a beret and an eye patch. Really? Wayne sets up a small listening device. Excuse me. Hey! This table is reserved. I come here all the time and spend a lot of money on this place, so why don't you leave me the hell alone? The snooty server walks away and Wayne turns to listen to Sandy and Darren. <clears throat> I mean, I don't mean to be pushy, but 
if this relationship is going to get serious, I, I have to give up becoming a nun and I have to decide soon because Sunday I'm taking my final vows. Yeah, that, that thought had occurred to me too. And if I do that, I, I need to know you want marriage and a family. Absolutely. I never thought I'd say this, but to anyone after Luigi died, but I love you, Darren. Wow. Wow, I, I love you too, Judith. Zap! Ow! Ow! Judith? I mean, Sandy. I mean, let's dance, okay? Darren takes her onto the dance floor and a bouncer comes up to Wayne's table and grabs him by the scruff of his collar. You're out of here. Put me down! I haven't ordered yet! Darren and Sandy dance getting close. Oh, they're getting real close. They're getting real close. Outside, Wayne is thrown against a light pole. Time for an attitude adjustment, mister. The bouncer pushes Wayne into the punches Wayne in the stomach, hitting the button on the zapper. Zap! Darren jolts. Oh! Hey! Nice move! Darren tries to roll with it, dancing more. Zap! Wayne is just getting this shit kicked out of him. Darren keeps getting shocked. Ow! Ah! Damn, he's good! Zap! Darren's Ow. nipples shoot sparks! Uh. Darren! Zap! Darren's nipple shoots sparks again and again. Darren's nipple catches fire. <gasps> Darren starts freaking out. Justifiably so. Oh my oh, god! Please! Oh my god! Darren runs for the bar, knocking over several drinks. He grabs one and douses his nipple flame. Are you uh. okay? Yeah, that was a little weird. Zap! The whole bar catches fire and Darren puts out the new nipple fire, grabs Sandy, and runs outside. Next to a nice restaurant, they run past the arriving fire department. Darren, 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 Darren. What's going on? I can explain. He pulls his shirt open, unhooking his nips. It's an aversion therapy. Wayne was trying to help me get over Judith. Judith? So I had these things on my nipples. Oh my god, it's it's so much worse than I thought. Darren tries to protest. No, obviously not ready for this relationship. No! Sandy runs off. No, I am! Sandy, wait! Darren gets caught in the unspooling fire hose, unable to get past it. Okay. He rolls to the ground, still caught. Damn it! He finally gets free and rushes to Sandy's car as she drives away. Sandy! Sandy, wait! Wait, Sandy! He takes off after her. Sandy, wait! Sandy! Interior convent later. Darren runs up to the door, exhausted. Sandy! I... Hold on. I have to type a thing, sorry. Um, Sandy opens the door, upset until she sees the breathless and panting Darren. <sighs> Darren, oh my god, Darren, what happened to you? I I ran here from the nightclub. But that's 30 miles. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you ever forgive me? <gasps> oh, yes. Because the whole Judith thing and the nipple clamps, it's crazy. And. Yes! Really? Yes! yes. It's like that? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm trying to become a nun, you know, forgiveness is just sort of my thing. I love you! Really? I love you! I love you! Oh, love! Love! Hug and share a kiss. Interior Wayne's garage. Wayne enters holding a bag of Arby's. Oh, God, I really love Arby's. He shows them to Judith like a peace offering. Abby. You didn't have to do that. Do that. Oh, I just happened to be by Arby's. They were 
throwing out old food. So, you know, I thought, why not? Either way, that's nice of you. He sits and pulls out her big Montana. No, that's not a euphemism. He puts the fries in her hand. Hey, I was wondering, why Darren? What do you mean? You don't seem the type to go for a sensitive guy like Darren. You seem more the kind of woman that needs an assertive type of guy. He pulls off her mask. Before I met Darren, I was engaged to a guy like that. She takes a big bite. His idea of fun was to fly to Thailand to fight in a kickboxing tournament. Interior kickboxing dungeon flashback. Josh, Judith X, fights against another kickboxer as Judith cheers from the sidelines. USA, go Josh! Josh takes a kick to the head and spins through the air. Judith slow motion screams, no! As he hits the ground, the ref checks his pulse and looks up at the crowd. Dead! Interior Wayne's garage, Judith looks at Wayne. After that, I decided no more tough guys. Yeah. Then you found Darren. Yeah. So do you even love him? Well, I think there's different types of love. Aha! I knew it. Look, sometimes you make make cold, rational decisions. You can't always follow your heart. Yeah, whatever. He moves to give her another bite. Although, I will admit, there's something sexy about a man who takes charge. Like, you kidnapping me. Mm -hmm. That took balls. Big balls. Gotta say, turn me on. She shifts in her chair. It did? Mm Mm-hmm. She goes to take a bite. A little sultry. A trip of cheese sauce falls into her cleavage. Wayne isn't sure what to do. He uses his finger to scoop the sauce. Judith looks at Wayne, a little shocked he's touching her that way. He sits there for a moment. (laughs) The sauce on his finger, looking for a napkin. She flicks her tongue, and Wayne moves his finger forward. Judith starts seductively licking the cheese off his finger. After a moment, she's just sucking his finger. Wayne surges forward and kisses her. He moves down her chest, stopping at the chains. Chains. God damn these chains. He grabs for the keys holding them up. Ah! He starts trying to unlock the chains. The key. The key. He stops. Wait! What am I doing? I can't let you go! Just give me one free hand. It'll be worth it. He thinks for a beat. Okay. Give me the fries. He grabs the fries from her hand and tosses them. She keeps kissing him as he unlocks one of her hands. Okay, okay, okay. She unbuckles his belt and shoves her hand down his pants. Guess she was watching those pornos that JD brought down. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Hey. The doorbell rings. Shit! They keep making out. The doorbell rings again. Wayne stands. Just wait one minute, okay? He pulls her hand from his pants and then stupidly runs up the stairs. The second he leaves, she holds up the keys, which she has snagged. Interior Wayne's living room. JD is eating calmly in his recliner as Wayne runs in. Dude! Do you, you boner? No, why didn't you answer the door? I'm eating. So? I don't answer when I'm eating. Since when? Since always. I never knew that. You didn't know a lot of things. You didn't know I was gay. Anything else you want to tell me? I got three balls. <laughs> oh, God! 
Wayne runs off for the front door. Dude, dude, dude. JD struggles to get up and runs after him. They open the front door and there stands Coach Norton. Hi, Coach. Coach, what are you doing here? Retrial. Got a judge that's a sports fan. Congrats. Oh, what are you going to do now? Well, that's why I'm here. Need a place to crash. Get my shit together. Figure out my next move. I knew I could count on you. Oh, our well, house is your house. You gotta you talk as long about. As you like. Great. Where's the bathroom? I gotta take a dump. No, we don't use the toilet anymore since we're cutting down on the water bill. JD looks confused. Well, what do you do? We, we just use the lawn now. Smart thinking. Coach runs off for the lawn as JD turns the way. You got okay. pension lows on the lawn, man? I play croquet out there. Are you crazy? Coach can stay here. We got a woman locked in the garage. Oh, yeah. Coach is crouched next to the mailbox. Uh, you boys got any TP? No! <laughs> That's all right. I'll find something. <laughs> Coach reaches into the mailbox and pulls out their mail, testing the wipeability. Mm. Be cool. We'll find some way to get rid of him. Okay. How about this? We tell him we got dates tonight. He can't be here because we're getting laid. No, you'll never believe that. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll tell him we got ghosts. Coach comes back in. Well, boys, what's for supper? Uh, listen, Coach. We have ghosts. What? We were thinking that maybe you staying here is not such a great idea. Nonsense. It'll give us a chance to get to know one another again. Hey, by the way, did you guys take care of that bitch that was going to marry Silverman? <laughs> Coach starts running through JD's leftover food. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, we stuffed that bitch just like you said. Good. How'd you do it? We ate her. You ate her? Yeah, we ate her. Alive. Well, my hat goes off to you. Boys are smart. That's the perfect crime. Wonder what's on the tube. He turns on the TV. No, coach! No! Coach looks at Judah still chained to her chair. What the hell we got here? Some kind of public access show or something? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. That's the kidnap victim, ain't it? You didn't kill her, did you? No, coach. Listen. I am really disappointed in you boys. Now I want you to go out there and off that coos. We can't, coach. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. Look, she's getting out. Go chop her head off or something. Sure enough, Judith is unchaining herself. Wayne just stares in disbelief. There's no fight left in you, boys. You're nutless. You've been pussyfied. Don't worry about a thing, boys. I'll take care of that broad. Coach runs off for the garage, Wayne following behind him. No, wait! Coach closes the door and locks it. Interior Wayne's garage, Coach. Pushes open the door, confronting Judith, who's just finishing with the chain. Oh, Jesus. Who the hell are you? Judith, don't worry, I'm coming! Let's just say I'm a friend of the boys, and I'm here to kill you. You don't mind if I try to defend myself, do you? Of course not. I love a good challenge. Coach drops into a deep karate pose, as does Judith. He moves towards her. Judith kicks him in the gut. Judith is oh. kicking the shit out of the coach. Wayne struggles to get to the door open as JD watches the coach ass kicking on the television. Wayne finally manages to get the door open. He runs downstairs to Judith. Are you okay? She turns, winds up, and kicks him square in the bollocks. Ah! Yeah! is right she runs upstairs towards the door she pulls the door open and slams it still inside jd who's been hiding underneath the shirt next to the door pulls off his disguise dude ah! <laughs> fucking a jd runs away and judith leaves interior judith's house darren and sandy are moving in Schlep i love how he just takes over her house schlepping a couch oh watch your step you got it they set the couch down. I'm so happy. Oh, me too. She pulls off her shirt. Does this couch does this couch fold out? Ugh, sorry. There we go. Sandy smiles and they kiss, falling to the couch, ready to fuck with the front door <laughs> wide open. Cause why not? 
guest Darren's actually into exhibitionist stuff now. <laughs> Hopefully butt stuff too. Judith runs up to the house and inside, seeing them making out on the couch. Oh, Sandy. What the hell is going on here? Judith! Yes? You're alive? Yes. Judith? Who is this tramp? I'm not a tramp. Actually, until yesterday, I was training to become a nun. I'm gone for a week and you're screwing a nun? Well, it is his fetish. No, no, we're in love. Yeah, that too. I thought you were dead. Oh, really? Well, I'm not dead. I was kidnapped, okay? It was a living hell. I was beaten, tortured, and treated like a friggin' farm animal. And the entire time, the only thing that kept me alive was the thought that Somewhere out there, my sweet Darren still loved me, and that one day we'd be together again. <laughs> she starts dramatically sobbing and runs into his arms. It was so horrible. They sit on the couch, and Sandy throws up her arms to say, Really, dude? Really? Exterior Wayne's house. Wayne and JD drive away from the house. Where are we going? I don't know, we gotta find her. Okay, where to? Go left. Go left. Go right. Okay. Interior, Judith's house. Judith sobs on the couch lying to Darren. They kept me in a dark closet for days and they fed me like crushed potato chips under the door. Sandy stands there awkwardly cut it, covering herself. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should go. Oh, no. Darren struggles to free himself from Judith's grip. Oh, no, Sandy. Sandy, no, please don't. Please don't. Please don't leave. Well, but I mean, I, Judith's alive and, and she's your fiance. I, I know. You're right. You're right. But I, but you can't go because I... Because what? Why, Darren? Be because I see you. Yeah? What? Well, we and, uh. Yeah? Judith realizes she, she, yeah, Judith, J Judith realizes she's losing and stands up throwing her arms around Darren, sinking her mental claws back in. <sighs> Sweetheart, we pledged our love to one another. Spare the pain of seeing us together. You. She tosses Sandy's shirt back to her. <gasps> Run along and back to the nunnery. Uh, Sandy, she, she's right. I mean, I did pledge. Okay. Bye. Sandy leaves, nearly running into Wayne and JD as they run up the porch. She's here! Hey, Darren! Sandy, hi. Sandy waves them inside. Look, I can... Darren, sorry. Wayne moves past Sandy. Darren, look, I understand that you're really upset, and I probably look like a really big asshole. Darren punches Wayne. Did <laughs> Judith ever say that it was them who kidnapped them? Dude! Dude! Wayne stands his eye already blackened. Okay, I deserve that. But now let me explain. Darren punches Wayne through the glass door. Exterior, Judas. House Wayne stands up and tries to keep convincing Darren. Okay, I, I guess I deserve that one too. But now we're even. All right, Darren punches Wayne off. The porch and he topples over the side and crashes into the hood of Sandy's car. Sandy screams. Darren, stop! No, we did it because we love you. Oh, right. Because you love me. Yeah, man. Come on, give me a hug. Yeah, it's... JD moves to hug Darren and who grabs him and throws JD off the porch too. JD lands on Sandy's roof, caving it in. Sandy looks up at the damage and starts wailing. The police pull up. Freeze! Get your hands up! 
interior police station. Wayne and JD sit in a holding cell. Wayne doing push-ups and reading. JD reading a magazine. Taryn enters and crosses to their cell. They pop up and run to the cell door. Darren! Don't think my presence here means I forgive you. I just wanted to tell you guys personally that Judith and I are getting married tomorrow. How the hell did Judith plan a wedding in like three weeks when she was kidnapped for one of them? You don't want to marry Judith. Admit it. Of course I do. Okay, then look into my eyes and say it. I want to marry Judith. Look into both our eyes at the same time and say it. I'm out of here. Darren leaves. Come on! We're sorry, okay? What we did was wrong. We gotta stop that wedding. Dude, how? Exterior football field. Coach stands on a row of tackling dummies as kids tackle them. Let's go, you maggots! Kill, kill, kill! Coach's cell phone rings. Hello. <coughs> Coach, yeah, it's Wayne and JD. Look, we need your help. I'd do anything for you boys. You're like sons to me. Name it, you got it. Well, we need you to post bail for us. It's 10000 apiece. No way. Come on, Coach. We need your help. Cheryl life is real tough. They're, they're making us their girlfriends in here. What? They're making you wear dresses? Yeah. Oh, my God, that's horrible. Don't worry about it. I'll get you out. Wayne hangs up and gives JD a thumbs up. Interior prison. Wayne and JD walk away from the phone. You got a boyfriend? Who? I want to meet him. <laughs> Interior Wayne and JD's cell. That night, the boys lay in their cell. They can hear beeping from the outside. What is that? God, it sounds like my truck. Yeah. Crash! The back of Wayne's truck crashes through the wall of their cell. Uh, the boys scream. The back door of the truck opens, and there stands Coach. Come on, boys, let's go. Get the lead out, boys. Huh, huh, huh. They spring up and jump into the truck. Come on, move it. You're free. Now where to, boys? Go left! Coach turns right. Yeehaw! Charge! And... <clears throat> <clears throat> Apologies. <clears throat> Interior convent. Sandy is kneeling at the head of the altar in front of Mother Superior. Sandy Perkis, do you vow to lead a life of poverty, chastity, obedience, and silence? She's about to say yes, but before she can, Wayne and JD burst in. Wait! Oh, I'm sorry! Sandy! Sandy! They run up to the altar. Sandy, look, you can't do this. You love Darren, right? Well, yeah. Well, Darren loves you. Really? JD turns to the rest of the nuns. See, Darren's her boyfriend, but he's getting this, he's got this other girlfriend, and then he's getting. Wayne punches ah. JD's arm, shutting him up. JD softly punches back. So what are you gonna do? Sandy looks at Mother Superior. Go, my child. Okay. Come on, we got a wedding to crash! Go, 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 go! Bye, everybody. Mother Superior closes her Bible. Ah, <sighs> damn. Lost another one. Son of a bitch. <laughs> and to your weight's truck moments later, Sandy bounces excited. Oh, God, I can't believe I'm doing this. Oh, here, we got you some clothes. They hand her a paper bag. Where did you get these? She pulls out a large red high heel. JD's sister. He's a stripper. And a hooker. Oh. Um, exterior arena, the truck pulls up to the backstage entrance, and Wayne and run... Wayne... Bleh, and Wayne runs inside with JD. A moment later, they run out with someone wrapped in a tarp. Oh, gotta go! Coach drives off. <clears throat> Interior Wayne struck the tarp is thrown back and here sits Neil Diamond. Fuck, here we go. <clears throat> oh my gosh, it's Neil Diamond! 
Sandy stands there dressed like the whore of Whoville with a tube top and a jacket covered in purple fur. What the hell is going on? Yo, let me explain. You guy, you're the guys who send me all those pictures and letters and tapes. Naked pictures. What? We never sent you any naked pictures? Wayne looks at JD. Dude. Sorry. Look, Mr. Diamond, you gotta help us save our buddy. He's gonna marry the wrong woman. Look, Sandy and Darren, they broke up. Love on the rocks? Ain't no big surprise. You gotta help us get them back together. I don't know. Neil, turn on your heart light. Judith brainwashed him. For years, Darren loved me, but I never knew it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. <clears throat> There's We're all talking death. over each other. And did I mention I was gay? I I've spent my life writing songs about the power of love. But until now, they've only been words. This, this may be my chance to, to prove that, that those words really mean something. You say that if Darren marries... Judith. 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 He'll be miserable. Right. 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 I believe in happy endings. If Neil Diamond, Neil Diamond has anything to do with it, this love story will have one. Coming on, yeah! Yeah! Judy and Wayne, high five. Yeah! We got Neil Diamond on board, all right! Where are we going? The park on America Avenue. Five O. What? Cops, Caprice, five cars back. Goddamn heat. One little prison break and they're all over. Coach reaches beneath the seat and pulls out a newsie. Whoa, Coach, whoa, 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 whoa. No matter what happens to me, don't look back. Just get this sweet gal to the man who loves her pronto. I'd rather be cut down in a hail of gunfire than go back to the big house. Nice to meet you, Mr. Diamond. Coach jumps out of the truck. Neil jumping up to keep driving. Whoa, hey! Coach slams into a parked car and stands. JD looks out the back window. Coach, look out! Oh, oh, sorry. Coach stands and gets hit by the Caprice, as he was just talking about, driven by two little old ladies who are probably Neil Diamond fans but not cops. They're not cops. Coach lies in the middle of the street. Neil looks up at the street signs. Hey, we're coming to America. Da -da 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 -da. Get it? Because he wrote a song. We're coming to America. Every 4th of July, bitches. Exterior wedding park. Minutes later, Judah stands with Darren at the altar. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to join Darren Silverman and Judith Festbegler in holy matrimony. If anyone has any objections, speak now. Judith wipes some fuzz off Darren's suit. I do. Neil steps out onto a balcony. What? Neil? Neil pulls out his guitar. Hello. My friends, hello. Neil? Neil. Judith looks to the priest. Get to the part where we say I do. It's good to need you so. It's good to love you like I do. Darren joins with a smile. And, and to feel, feel this way. way. Sandy runs in and stands in the back of the aisle. When I hear you say, Judith grabs Darren. Hello. That's not what the line is. Judith grabs Darren. Say, I do. No. Say, I do. I, I can't because I. I think because I because I love Neil and I love Sandy. The crowd ooh, is in shock. You're in love with this slut. I'm not a slut. 
Slut. Andy is my one and only someone. Hello. The wedding band joins with Neil as Dan runs up to the aisle and kisses Sandy. Judith turns to the priest. What about me? Who's my someone? Wayne runs in at the end of the aisle. Hello again. Hello. It's good to need you so. Judith starts running up the aisle towards Wayne, shoving through Darren and Sandy. She tosses aside her bouquet without breaking a stride and grabs a chair. I think... Oh, shit. Crash! <laughs> Judith breaks the chair over Wayne's head. You ruined my life! She grabs Wayne's legs and starts dragging him across the ground. No! I saved Darren! Just because I lost Darren doesn't mean I'm crazy enough. She kicks Wayne to hook up with you she picks up another chair but before she can hit him again she he pulls the right out from ah! her. he jumps on top of her pit top of her pinning her down ah! why did you the bed when you kiss me you liked it you're right i have a weakness for incompetent morons huh? she sucker punches him wayne spits out a tooth she punches him to the ground and climbs onto him choking wayne he punches her in the face she also spits out a tooth seemingly unfazed she chokes him getting closer and closer until eventually they start aggressively kissing and i know it's late but i couldn't wait hello jd runs in carrying coach in his arms they look from darren to sandy and wayne to judith kissing all over the place what about you when are you gonna get hitched Actually, I'm not. I'm gay. Me too. Really? <laughs> Cut to exterior concert. A priest stands in front of the three couples. By the power vested in me by the state of Washington, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Darren and Sandy kiss. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Judith and Wayne smile with matching missing teeth. They kiss. I now pronounce you man and man. You may kiss the man. The crowd cheers and the lights come up, revealing they are all on stage at Neil Diamond's show. Holy Holly begins. Sing! Neil picks up his guitar and they all take petition, uh, positions as the song continues. Sing! Sing! Come on, we need you for this one. Sing! Sing. Sing a song. Neil waves to dare it over to the mic. Sing. Sing a song of songs. Neil waves over to Wayne and JD as they rush up next to Neil. Sing. Sing, Sing it out. Sing it strong. Sing it. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Calling the sun in the dead of night, and the sun's gonna rise in the sky. Sun's gonna rise. Touch a man who can walk upright, and the lame man, he's gonna fly. <laughs> he's gonna fly. <laughs> And I fly, fly. fly. And I fly. Holly, holy love. The girls dance back up along with Coach. Holy, holy, holy. Dream of only you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> holy, holy. Holy ho. Holy song, holy, holy love, holy, holy rain. They all groove and boogie. Ready to start their life ahead. Fade to black. The end. Oh, uh, thank you all for joining us for a silly as hell reading. This was a blast. See y'all at the next one.